anybody knows who his PR is, perhaps they could put me in touch. Because if I could get banned from going to America, and I have, I'm not planning to go to America, it would be great, wouldn't it? I wouldn't agree with some of his, uh, his views. But hey, listen, he said he's got freedom to express them. Have we lost the plot in this country? Michael Savage! <laughs> right on, bro. We with you, bro. We got your back. We'll stand with you. We'll show them over there with their stiff upper lips. We'll show them a thing or two right here, right now. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm exhausted from it, but I love it. Now, we open with my assistant, my, uh, I hate to call him anything less than my assistant, Teddy the Poodle. The, uh, they call him a toy poodle. I don't like the word toy. To me, you know, he's a, pole, he's a poodle. What toy? He doesn't know he's a toy. Barking to rule Britannia, which I thought was cute. We went into a chat show, which is what they call it over there, chat show, about the banning of Michael Savage from the UK. And these guys have it exactly right. I don't know who James Whale is, but he's a new friend of mine. He says, he'd like to know who my public relations agent is. <laughs> he said, I don't agree with some of his views, how they draw out the vowels, or consonants. But the, have we lost the plot here in this country? You're darn right you have. When you have a pothead in the home office there, whose husband downloads pornography and bills it to the taxpayers of Britain, it's cheap. You know something I've noticed about libs? Libs are very cheap. And I don't understand the connection. There's something about anal retentiveness. It's very Freudian, but I can't get into it right now. Let's listen to clip two from England. I'm just slightly puzzled that our democracy is so fragile <laughs> that we can't um, survive. You've forgotten survival. something. You have forgotten that at this particular moment there's something going on called an investigation into MPs' expenses, haven't you? You've forgotten all about that. You haven't forgotten that. You've forgotten all about that, and then suddenly this pops up and, oh, well, we'll ban him. See, they're saying him, but they don't say Michael Savage. Now, let's go to three and hear the next one. I think it's completely wrong. I mean, my view is quite straightforward. We've got a lot of laws about racial hatred and all the rest of it now. Exactly, an incitement to violence. Absolutely. If somebody breaches the law, you have them out. But if they don't, you let them in. I think it's, I think it's absurd to produce this kind of second list, the kind of McCarthy list of unacceptable well, opinions. Kind of I don't like that at all. It seems like his name's been plucked out of, uh, of a hat. You know, these are the English that I grew up admiring. Who are these wonderful people? Shirley Williams, love you. And then there's this man, Andrew Neal, love you. Well, who are these folks? They're wonderful. They got it exactly right. This is the England I grew up admiring. It gets better in four. But he but doesn't want to come over here. He never yeah, even applied I mean, to uh, come uh, up here. by our uh, Home Secretary that he was planning to come. Oh, uh, I he mean, he, he, he must be psychic. <laughs> Some of the uh, videos that the Home Secretary's husband has been watching, <laughs> if he banned, before he banned his job. They're supposed to be banned in some cases. Oh, that's very funny. Uh, maybe she's psychic from her husband's videos. See, now we're getting arch. We're getting back to the real intellect that we grew up to admire about. I mean, those of us who are Anglophiles, and I have been an Anglophile, I must admit. Now let's go to 05. I mean, is it a cover? Here's the cynical uh, response. That she's in the process of banning a number of what the tabloids call preachers of hate. Mm. Yes. And um, they're mainly Islamic. Yeah. So to balance it, you ban <laughs> some right-wing <laughs> shock jock from America. I think there's a good deal in that. Well, uh, why do they always refer right-wing? Have you heard the media, anyone in the media use the word left-wing? Have you noticed this? Now you hemorrhoid with ears on Fox. Pay attention. Pay attention now. I know you put the booze down, and I know your ears are, 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 are cocked real, real sharply. Hemorrhoid with ears on Fox News, who copies everything I do. Take this down, Junior. They use the word right-wing shock jock, right-wing this, right-wing politicians. Cheney's a right-winger. I'm a right-winger. Have you heard the word used recently, left-wing, with reference to Obama or any of his minions? Of course not. Now let's go to clip six. Who was it? Voltaire? I always forget. You know, I, I may mean, disagree with yes. you, but I'll defend your yes. right to say it. Yes, that's correct. Right. Well, well done, it was Voltaire. Voltaire. Yeah. Wasn't that what my philosophy professor would be proud of me? <laughs> wasn't that what our democracy is based on? Well, not really, is it? Because we have so many rules and regulations about what we can say, when we can say it, how we can say it, that, that we're so wound up with political correctness and fairness that what we actually do is, if anybody is likely, I'm amazed you're still on anyway, if anybody says anything that might actually upset Cruising someone, here, isn't it? <laughs> someone, then they're, they, they can't, because you might upset somebody. You know, I'm thinking of, of moving to England now and getting a job in talk radio over there or talk television on BBC because 
it sounds so pleasant. It is, just sounds wonderfully polite and pleasant. I would probably live an extra 2.3 years if I gave up talk radio in America because this is a brutal, this is a brutal combat sport here. Those folks, they support each other. They have fun. It's delightful. I'm sure they go out for darts or whatever they do over there. I don't know if they still play darts in England, but I would imagine someone still must play darts in England. <laughs> what a fun thing. Okay, look, I'm exhausted from all of this. I can talk about preaching the beautiful... Uh, whatever she ran for, and Donald uh, Donald Trump. Good for him. He did the right thing. I could talk about the pilot who was uh, uh, flunked every exam and then still flew the plane into the ground. Any horrible story. Not only did he lose his life and the co-pilot, the woman, I know women fly and all that, but not only are they both dead, but now their reputations are dead with them. Terrible, terrible thing. Terrible thing. Oh, by the way, I've coined a new word for you out there. Again, this is to that special new person at Fox News who listens very carefully, he's a very good student, although he only went to high school, I'm sure he could have gotten through college with a degree in uh, tire changing. Pay attention now, here it comes, hemorrhoid with ears. The new word is homeophobe. Are you a homeophobe? Now we've all heard the word homophobe, we know what that is, we've been cauterized with the word homophobe. But I realized that because I once wrote a book in the early 80s on homeopathy, uh, that I'm banned in England. It could be because they are homeophobic. Joke. Look it up. Find out what homeopathy is and what allopathy is and get back to me, okay? 1-800-449-8551. There are some amazing articles that I found today I put up on the website. And this I don't understand. Obama threatens to limit U.S. intelligence with Brits. What? The Obama administration says it may curtail Anglo-American intelligence sharing if... The British High Court, emphasis on the middle word, discloses new details of the treatment of a former Gitmo detainee. Yes, it is a high court indeed, very high indeed. U.S. will pay $2.6 million to train Chinese prostitutes to drink responsibly on the job. I'm not making this one up. This is where your, this is where your tax dollars have gone. We got this from CNS News, and I said I can't believe this. That's right. The National Institute of Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, a part of the NIH, I told you the NIH was a worthless body of, of petty politicians, will pay $2.6 million in U.S. tax money to train Chinese prostitutes to drink responsibly on the job. You're not going to believe this. The grant was made last November, and it refers to prostitutes as female sex workers, or FSW, they don't use the word prostitute or hooker, and their pimps as gatekeepers. So the next time you see a guy with a, uh, a fur hat and a fur coat somewhere in a cheap neighborhood in America, if they still wear that kind of thing, do not refer to them as uh, uh, pimps. Refer to them as gatekeepers, because that's the new phrase from the National Institutes of Health. <clears throat> the grant abstract says, previous studies in Asia and Africa and our own data from SFWs, female sex workers in China, suggest that the social norms and institutional policy within commercial sex venues, as well as agents overseeing the FSWs, i.e. the gatekeepers, defined as persons who manage the establishments and are sex workers, can you believe this, are potentially of great importance in influencing alcohol use and sexual behavior among establishment-based FSWs, close quote. That got them $2.6 million. That was done last November. I told you the, the NIH is a corrupt body. It is as corrupt as both parties in America. If you care to comment on any of these topics, I don't think I want to talk about them, but I'll be back. AM 560.